Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, here with a story that actually threw me for a loop when I first read the headline. Um, so the headline on Hollywood Reporter is Paul Greengrass tackling Elliot Ness movie. Now, my immediate thought was, oh, shit, son, they're going to be remaking The Untouchables, a movie that never, ever, 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 ever needs to be remade, period. Brian De Palma's uh, 1987 movie is fucking fantastic, and, and this one, no, doesn't need to touch it. So then the joke I thought to myself was, oh, Matt Damon as Elliot Ness. I could see, like, I could see what they might try to do with this in terms of, like, bringing in Matt Damon as, like, a crime-fighting Elliot Ness and, like, turning him into some form of fucking, like, vigilante crime fighter that, you know, uses fisticuffs to take down Capone instead of getting him for tax evasion. And then, of course, my immediate thought was, yeah, I'd actually probably watch that. Because, goddammit, why not? However, I was totally wrong. Totally wrong. So uh, while this does focus on Elliot Ness, who is a famous lawman uh, known for for bringing down Al Capone and is like completely uncorruptible and 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 is just this legend in law enforcement. This is not that story because most people don't realize this. Elliot Ness actually had a career post Al Capone, right? He did. We don't really talk about it very often because it's not as glamorized as as Al Capone. Uh, but it, it definitely happened. And so um, Paul Greengrass is teaming up with uh, Brian uh, he uh, Hegeland, who wrote the uh, screenplay for L.A. Confidential, which, fuck me, is is not only is an, that an excellent directed movie and excellently acted movie, it's an excellently written movie. So my nips perked when I saw this. I was like, ooh, I'm down. Um, and so it's a, it's a project titled Ness is what it's going to be called, which they're probably going to change – because a lot of people are going to see Ness and they're going to think, is like Nessie? Are we like a like Loch Ness monster? Like, what the fuck is going on? Um, and, and this is actually an adaptation of a graphic novel called Torso that was written by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Andrakos, uh, a book from a few years ago. And according to Wikipedia, it says Torso is a true crime limited series graphic novel written by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Andrakio. Um, It's based on the true story of the Cleveland Torso murderer and the efforts, efforts of the famous lawman Elliot Ness and his band of unknowns to capture him. Now, this actually came out in uh, 1998. So this story has been gestating for a, a while. <laughs> Right. For for a while. But the Cleveland Torso Murderer is an interesting story uh, because just taking a look at again at the Wikipedia page, it says here the official number of murders attributed to the Cleveland Torso Murderer is 12, although recent research has shown that there are as many as 20. But some, including lead Cleveland detective Peter Merrilo, believe that there have been 13 or more victims in Cleveland, Pittsburgh and Youngstown, Ohio between the 1920s and the 1950s. The victims of the Cleveland Torso murderer were often drifters whose identities were never determined, although there were a few exceptions. Um, and ev invariably, all the victims were male and female, appeared to hail from lower class of society, easy prey in Depression-era Cleveland. Uh, they were also known as the working poor, uh, who had nowhere else to live but the ramshackle shanty towns known as the Cleveland Flats. The torso murderer always beheaded and often dismembered his victims, sometimes also cutting the torso in half in many cases, the cause of death was the decapitation or dismemberment itself. Most of the male victims were castrated. Some victims showed evidence of chemical treatment being applied to their bodies. Many of the victims were found after a considerable period of time following their deaths, sometimes a year or more. This made identification nearly impossible, since the heads were often not found. During the time of the official murders, Elliot Ness held the position of public safety director in Cleveland, a position with authority over the police department and ancillary services, including the fire department. While Ness had little to do with the investigation, his reputation as leader of the Untouchables made him an irresistible character in the modern torso murder lore. Ness did contribute to the arrest and interrogation of one of the prime suspects, Dr. Francis E. Sweeney, as well as the demolition and burning of the Kingsbury Run, from which the killer took his victims. At one point, the killer even taunted Ness by placing the remains of two victims in full view of his office in City Hall. Now, you can kind of see that this is going to be a very loose-fitting adaptation, right? So, this story, 
by Brian Michael Bendis uh, clearly is, is focusing on Elliot Ness as being the investigator involved in this. But we know that there hasn't ever been a, you know, there hasn't ever been uh, a person uh, charged or convicted for these crimes, very similar to the Zodiac murder, uh, you know, to the Zodiac killer who, um, you know, uh, what, according to the book Zodiac, you know, they basically figured it was Arthur Lee Allen. And, and so it's going to, you know, tell us kind of about the investigation phase of this uh, and then leading to probably the the burning of the Kingsbury run. And then after that, you know, like the person gets away. It's going to be heavily fictionalized is what I'm trying to say. Now, it does say here that Hollywood has been trying to get this movie made since the mid 2000s. And at some point, David Fincher and David Lowry were attached to direct at previous incarnations. But now it's gone to Paul Greengrass. And I again, I'm, I'm just calling it now. Matt Damon as fucking Elliot Ness. Because Matt Damon feels like the best type of person to play Elliot Ness to begin with. Now, that's one of the, one of the things I felt worked really well for Kevin Costner in The Untouchables is the fact that he does kind of exude that, you know, that n- n- never corruptible mentality, right? The 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 boy next door, the goody two shoes, the boy scout type guy. And, and that's what I, I, I feel when I look at Matt Damon. Like if Matt Damon ever played a role where he was like a deranged serial killer, I would think, eh, that's out of the realm of possibility for... For Matt Damon, whereas Ben Affleck, if he were to do it, you could go, yeah, I could see Ben Affleck doing it. So I have to wait to see what happens with this. Ultimately, I find the story to be very interesting. Um, Brian, uh, you know, uh, (laughs) Helgeland um, for his work on L.A. Confidential will probably be able to bring a very kind of gritty, you know, like post-Depression era feel to Cleveland for this particular story. And I'm hoping that they're able to tell something pretty cool with it. I haven't read Torso, so I don't quite know um, what's in it. So I can't talk about that. But overall, this story seems interesting. And I do want to know your thoughts. Is this the kind of story you'd like to see? Would you prefer a remake of The Untouchables? Who do you think would play Elliot Ness? Why isn't it Matt Damon? These are things I want to know. Go ahead and write them down in the comments below. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. You've been listening to Three Buck Theater. I will talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day and peace out.